be me, playing Pathfinder with the guys from Of Hands Hookers. Party is all min max to hell in preparation for what will surely be a terrifying campaign. Not a fan of going ham so I go healer. Since the party definitely has damage covered that leaves me open to try something different. Rest of the party consists of a fighter, a sorcerer, a rogue, and a gunslinger. All they know is combat and work. Decided the party needed someone to help mellow it out and keep them in check with reality. To remind them what they are fighting for. Enter Father Nicolozzo a Batangelo. Cleric of Caden Kalian the accidental drunken god who dabbles in alchemy on the side. Pretty much your typical medieval monk. Brews beer and wine. Studies alchemy. Friendler to everyone. One of those generic priests that are always at the villages that you stop by for heals. Just going about their day helping everyone and doing charity work. Big portly happy old man who just wanted everyone to be safe and have a good time. As one player put it it's like Friar Tuck and Uncle Iron adopted a kid and replaced all the tea with beer. Nicolozzo was an abbot as his name would suggest. Lived peacefully in a town that the party had stopped by. The healer had died and they needed anyone who would help. Naturally the large father agreed to tag along. His name is a mouthful so they just call him Abbot, though the gunslinger insisted on calling him St. Nick since his usual half-drunken state made his nose red. He constantly gifted the slinger with more powder and fancy bullets, and he was definitely fat enough to play the part, so the party sets off with their new healer in tow, as well as his rather large wagon full of supplies and tools. A quick mention about Abbot's wagon. Being a common man he did not live out of a backpack like the rest of the party. He was reasonable and he had a wagon full of food and tools and various other things. However when I say full I mean full. This was a frickin' Conestoga wagon which was designed to carry 6 tons of freight. He had an alchemy table, oven, hammer and anvil, forge, grindstone, spare robes and clothes for everyone, half a ton of food and water, another half a ton of beer wine and whiskey, spinning wheel, spare wheels, butter churn, Full distillery, more alchemical components than you could shake a 10 foot pole at. And pretty much everything else the party could ever practically or impractically need. He even brought a pair of cows named Sasha and Maxima to walk behind it while the bulls Brachev and Vitaly pulled. Naturally the party started to throw an absolute fit when they realized their travel speed would slow down to a blindingly fast 10 miles a day. Then the rogue realized that the wagon could still carry 4 more tons of crap and just about creamed herself when she thought of all the loot she could hide in it. The gunslinger was too busy preparing to enact all his wildest western fantasies on it to give a hoot about speed. The fighter and sorcerer were still a little iffy but they got over it when Abbott put up hammocks so they could rest without even stopping. Eventually after a one-sided vote they let him keep it and they set off to their great adventure. Traveling turns into a twisted Oregon trail from hell. Have cured dysentery no fewer than five times. Had to bury a hireling. Here lies Rick. He got the shits. Albers when we go hunting or leave the trail. Raids from tribes of goblins and orcs. Quickly learned that Abbott was most definitely not optimized for battle. Overweight monk who refused to wear armor and was definitely not fit for combat of any type whatsoever. However he was a godsend when it came to supporting, especially after the gunslinger gave him a blunderbuss. Everyone was well rested, had more than enough healing, had alchemy vials and treated weapons. Every now and again would see the wonder of a bomb being lobbed through the air by the impromptu grenade launcher. While he didn't do a lot of damage by himself he made sure the party's lives were significantly easier and that their loot was always safe. Mostly because he stayed with the wagon to hide and heal creators needed. As such the wagon became a bit of a priority for the party and most of the tactics revolved around staying near it or keeping the enemy away from it. On one occasion in particular an orc got past the party and made a dash for the wagon. The gunslinger fumbling a last minute shot as it jumped in. Abbott was in the middle of getting an alchemist's firebomb ready when his unexpected guest entered and his blunderbuss was out of reach. Seeing no other option he grabbed the vial, grabbed another of kerosene, drained them both directly into his mouth. One passed constitution check later the orc had a very bad time. The portly priest followed his flaming intruder out of the wagon, giving his best battle cry as flames shot everywhere. Which caused the remaining orcs to decide that perhaps they should be somewhere else. The rest of the party turned and stared in awe. Abbott burped as a puff of smoke left his nostrils. Politely covered his mouth and apologized. Then went back into his wagon. Few weeks later party is in a city going after a lord doing some very unsavory things with the other planes. Knows we are coming. Need to get into the keep. No way in hell the party is gonna sneak in there. Need someone unsuspecting who blends in. Party and table slowly turn and look at Abbott and me. Welp, 
don't even need a disguise, just waddles his fat ass right into the keep, talks with all the other priests, takes a visit to the king's wine cellar to make sure everything is as quality as his god would like, asked to sample some old brands just to make sure they are still good and aren't poisoned since divine protection and all that, Christmas came early, proceeds to get his wine snob on, goes through the entire damn cellar marking which ones are crap, which ones are good enough, even identifies a few poisoned ones, throws out over half the wine in the cellar, so much it's turning the streams red. Lord hears about this and demands to meet this priest. Abbot is dragged out of the cellars to the throne room to meet the lord. By the time Abbot gets to the inner keep he is absolutely sloshed. His BA content is so damn high a vampire would consider him a hard liquor. Barely able to stand by the time he meets the lord. Time to talk with him. The extremely honest and nice monk is hammered and needs to stay undercover. Gods help me. Proceed to knock over a dozen charisma checks out of the park. Rich asshole gets a kick out of it, tells his guards that there is a man who's dedicated to his work, instantly promoted to cellar keeper, demands Abbott start a new brand to help with his income, develop new wine only using water that is holy water and blessed grapes. Name the brand drunken monk. Celebrate with more wine, party now has a man on the inside. Can't poison him, would blow Abbott's cover. Can't assassinate him or charge in, too many guards and the guy is paranoid. Party is out of ideas. Abbott has a plan. We're gonna help him do his planar stuff. The face when. Convince them to roll with it. Party has no idea what the plan is but they trust and make. Start running secret missions for the lord. Abbott keeps bringing him wine and thwarting assassination attempts. Lord loves this fat bastard. Weeks pass. The lord has everything ready. He is going to bind himself with a demon in exchange for power and immortality. Throws a party with all his advisors and friends. Of course the abbot is there supplying drinks and having a good time. Makes sure to give the lord plenty of wine. Ritual starts. Party all looks at abbot for the dramatic interference and grand master plan. Abbot doesn't even leave his sit. Just sits and watches. Party waits. Demonic circle starts glowing. Abbot just sips his wine. Party panics. Goes into action mode. Fighting through underlings and minions as the lord starts to transform. Abbott just throws out enough heals to keep them alive, no buffs or alchemy. Doesn't seem bothered in the slightest. Lord floats up into the air, burst of red light, drops to the ground, big old demon wings and horns. Party is losing their shit. Demon Lord stands and gets ready to tear them a new asshole so wide it could be used as a dimensional portal. Then he starts screaming. Demon Lord falls to the ground, vomiting profusely and yelling. Abbott is still calmly sitting in his chair. Fighting stops as everyone stares at the demon lord dying on the floor. Body breaks down and starts burning. Nobody knows what is going on. Party turns and stares at Sin Nick. Before the transformation he gave the lord three whole bottles of drunken monk. Once he became a demon he counted as an evil outsider. The demon had drank three whole bottles of distilled holy water and grapes. Father Nicolozo Batangelo grinned and looked back at the party as he took a sip. He never did appreciate good wine. Be me. Playing 5th edition. Group of 5 rondos, half orc fighter, halfling warlock, a gnome bard, a half elf ranger, and a tiefling rogue. Filling positions as is my purpose in life. Party needs a healer. Starting at an inn. Oh boy. Sounds like a job for Nicolozo Batangelo the drunken monk. All starting at level 1. Must be Nick in his younger years. Go life cleric and stuff points into strength accordingly. Naturally take tavern brawler with a background in alchemy. Spent every single gold on ingredients, bags, and items. Begin the campaign of the carry cleric. Everyone is sitting at different tables at an inn. Nick is busy making alchemists fire on the table he's at. Rogue is incredibly sketchy and keeps bothering the monk about what he's doing. Doesn't help that the only other NPC is an incredibly sketchy girl also at Nick's table. Rogue makes the mistake of giving Nick an excuse to ramble about alchemy. Give him a full lecture on safety procedures and correct measurements until he fucks off. Barmaid offers drinks. Nick declines as he has a small keg strapped to his hip. Fighter and Ranger take drinks. Nothing else really going on. Fighter is halfway out the door when the barmaid mentions she needs some brave adventurers. Everyone scrambles over at the chance to do something. Basement has a rat infestation. Party loses interest. Giants rats. Party regains interest. Doesn't have much gold though. Party loses interest. Free drinks. Party regains interest. Descend into the depths of the bar. Dirty ass stone basement. Looks like a damn cave. 
Nick is naturally the only one with lanterns, gives one to the orc so he can check ahead. Three giant rats surround a pit. Nobody else seems bothered that there is a giant pit in the basement of the inn. Smoke the rats in one round of combat with spells and an orc. Warlock sees a hole in the wall behind the pit. Goes to check it out. Hears an awful scuttling noise coming out of the stone. Giant swarm of centipedes in the wall. Lobs a cantrip into the hole but it does practically nothing. Roll initiative. Nick goes first. Charges forward and throws the halfling behind him. Chucks an alchemist's fire into the hole. Rest of the party prepares actions as the swarm spills out. Swarm is the size of two large creatures. Orcs battle X does jack squat. Same with the arrows and throwing daggers. Swarm is only weak against AoE and fire. Nick is the only source of either. Rogue and Ranger both fail fear checks and start running. Warlock thanks Nick for his heroic sacrifice by running despite passing his check. Fighter hucks his lantern into the swarm and runs while it chases him. Bard bro plays the only fitting song for the moment as he runs since he can't do much else. Nick chases them both and throws another alchemist fire in. Convinces the rogue to quit running and grab the last alchemist's fire from his bag. Rogue hurls it while the rest of the party runs around the cave in circles. Nick grabs a vial of acid as a last resort and tosses it into the swarm. Manage to finish off the swarm with it thanks to solid damage rolls and dot from the fires. Sweep the chard remains into the pit. Investigate the hole in the wall with the fighter. Find half a dozen bodies with gear on them. Convince the fighter to help pull them out so that Nick can give them a proper burial. Something doesn't smell right here and it isn't the burning bugs. Drag the corpses upstairs as the party asks for their reward. Nick asks why the hell there are bodies in the basement along with giant killer swarms. Sketchy girl and the barmaid don't respond. Fighter and rogue start vomiting. Room starts to blow for everyone. Girls start to transform before our very eyes. Chokers under the effects of illusions. Or hell no. Nick charges forward and breaks a bottle over the ex-barmaid's head. Grapples as a bonus and yanks it over the counter. Bard bro knows what's going on and helps knock it prone. Other one charges and attacks the fighter. Gets smacked with a spell and an arrow but shrugs it off. Nick yells to the fighter to shove it prone. Fighter passes and floors it with a shield bash. Nick grapples the prone choker as well. Holds them both down as the party wails on them. Bard bro must have got a 20 on an insight check and could read my mind. Grabs a table and drags it 10 feet away from the counter. Calls Nick the undertaker. Nick drags both of the chokers up onto the counter with him. Supplexes them both through an alchemist's table. Kills one on impact. Other gets poked with a rapier and dies next round. Party starts to investigate the inn. Feeling along the walls. Rogue find an unholy shrine to bowl where a wall should have been. Illusion around us disappears. It's a cave with a demon shrine. All the beer was bog water and blood. Rogue is chaotic stupid. Pisses on the shrine. Turns out that Baal has a bunch of really messed up rituals. Bodily fluids are not uncommon in them. Reactivates the shrine and the illusion starts to take form. Turns into whatever the person causing it wants. Naturally it turns into a drug house. Rogue and Warlock are thrilled. Nick meanwhile is outside with the rest of the party. Not too huge on the literal demon shrine dedicated to murder. Driving pitons with chains into the stone above the cave so he can cause a cave in. Nick and Fighter have already passed their strength checks when the Warlock and Rogue come outside to show everyone. Rocks fall right behind them and seal it off. Rogue is pissed and threatens to kill Nick. Warlock asks if he is sure about fighting the man who just wrestled two grappling creatures into the ground. Rogue backs off muttering something about revenge. Nick meanwhile is already leaving with the gnome. Not going to stay in a group with two demon worshippers. Pass Bard bro some wine and waddle off into the sunset. Be me. Playing 5th edition on tabletop sim. Party as a female halfling rogue disguised as a male dwarf, an elven ranger, and Mary Sue incarnate. 9 foot tall 670 year old kitsune 5 featuring tall homebrew race with 100 year lifespan gun mage homebrew warlock gestal homebrew with the immortal homebrew background that specializes in necromancy all homebrewed spells. Literally wears a kimono and uses a gun for casting with a katana as a sidearm. Has a hatred for all men. Supposedly neutral evil but is a literal psychopath who tortures things for fun and screws over the party because she can. Player won't shut up about all the different ways he has tortured creatures with this character and how traumatic and rappy her past was. Friends with the DM so no getting rid of her. Decide this party needs a proper man to carry it to victory. Get out Nicolozzo a bot and jello. The alchemist LFE cleric with the healer feet. 
strapping and handsome lad at 5 feet 6, 250 pounds, and 67 years young, lives for healing the party, or full at everything else. Can't even run since his armor is too heavy and he's old. Is the only person who tries to talk to everyone including Edgelord since he is friendly and wants to help. Gets snubbed by fox ears anyway. Gods help us all. On a training mission from the local guild to fight off waves of monsters to prove that we aren't awful. Party doesn't have any tanks so Nicolazzo volunteers to draw all the attention since he has chainmail and a shield despite it being too heavy for him to run in. First wave is some goblins that are picked apart fairly quickly. Edgelord blows a spell slot on two goblins to show off her amazing powers. Yay. Next out is a swarm of zombies. Cleric to the rescue. Turn undead. Every zombie fails its save and runs away. DM tosses out a tiny damage AoE to bring them back in the fight. Alright then. Waddle nicks fat ass into the horde and casts sanctuary. Zombies have crap wisdom. Fail at hitting Nick but they need to keep attacking him as he is the closest. Spend every round using dodge. Get wailed on by 8 zombies for 5 turns straight while taking no damage. Edgelord gets binked by an arrow and won't quit complaining about Nick not doing his job. DM throws in some bears as zombies get killed off by the party. One of the bears chases down Edgelord who decided she was going to be a tank. Gets KO'd in one turn. Damn kids making me do things. Waddle over with the pack of zombies and bears in tow. Revive her and slap on a healing kit for good measure. Rogue tries drags her away from the horde that followed Nick. Resists it as she is too proud. Rogue passes it anyway and drags her dumbass off. Party slowly whittles down the horde while Nick keeps them busy swinging at him. Eventually only one bear left standing. He shall be my friend. Never attacked him or his friends so I'm not hostile. Give him some of Nick's endless supply of beer and pass an animal handling check. DM doesn't want me to have a bear. Makes him take a constitution roll for the beer. Gets a 1 and dies of alcohol poisoning. Like hell he does. Get a 23 on a medicine check to save him. DM says it isn't good enough. Use healer featuring toe automatically save without a roll needed. Fine. Name him some Bernard. Blow the rest of my spells on healing him back to full health. DM brings out the final enemy. It's a bard. Wanders over to Edgelord and makes a massive show of kissing her hand and fawning over her. Edgelord is actually somewhat decent to this person and loudly proclaims that this is how a man is supposed to act. Rogue doesn't trust him and backstabs him. Bard runs away while Rogue jumps into the nearby river to hide. Edgelord is pissed and threatens to kill the Rogue but is calmed down by the DM. Nicolozo and Bernard just wanna go home. Rogue hops out of the river and accidentally splashes some drops of water on Edgelord. Flips a shit and starts going full ham trying to murder the Rogue. Entire party tries to defend the Rogue but Edgelord won't quit trying to murder him. DM needs to bring out a level 20 DM PC with silence to grapple and drag Edgelord away. What a delightful soul. Cooldown period between games. Nicolozzo is happy to talk to all the guild members including Edgelord. Tries to help everyone get along. Spends his days gathering herbs and brewing potions to heal everyone. Even tries to teach the new orc paladin how to read. Edgelord won't quit being a bitch to everyone. Gets into a debate with Nicolozzo over how people age and act. Keeps calling her child despite her being 600 years older than him. Edge decides to get snarky with a cleric and insults his looks. Nick breaks out some of his favorite drinking metaphors to lighten the mood. I've aged like a fine wine my dear. Some can appreciate it, most will say it tastes like vinegar. They're both right. Edgelord breaks out the trademark condescending tone. Only mortals would care about something as superficial as age. Nick frowns disappointingly and takes another sip of his ale. I believe you age like milk. Edgelord won't talk to Nicolozzo anymore. Again, this is more of Felix's videos. I think his stuff's amazing. I love his stories. Um, I'm probably going to do all of his stuff at some stage just because I think it's fucking great. I love the way he can turn, like, you know, the most boring and mundane characters into something so beloved almost, you know? And it's the same thing I've got with Shoggy. I love the lighting style. I just, I really get into it and I love what he does. And uh, I think they're great. I really enjoy them and I hope you guys enjoy them too. I think, for me personally, I think he's one of the best, you know, for me, and I think that's why I like to do his stories, because, like, you know, the way I choose stories, I like, you know, I, I, I always, I'm always leading, I'm always leading, like, you know, these stories online, like, you know, I, I love a good D&D light up, or a better, like, you know, 40k fan fiction or whatever, I'm just gravitate towards that type of shit, 
and there's definitely like you know a quality barrier like you know a lot of it can be like you have to wait through a lot of shit to find the good but when you do find the good it's like a diamond and shit you know and uh, i just love his stuff so like i hope you guys love his stuff too because oh my god i'm fucking gushing please make it stop i know like uh subscribe all the other good shit otherwise i'm gonna keep rambling on hope you boys enjoyed and uh we'll see what's in store next if you haven't already check out my Redbubble portfolio, you might just find something you like. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services. 